so guys i'm having a snack moment but have you ever like wondered what happens to the food we eat and how it gets assimilated in our body well i'm about to tell you on the other side of this tutorial stay tuned Digestion is defined as the breakdown of large food molecules into smaller ones which can be absorbed by the body. Now digestion is achieved by a working system and this system consists of cells such as goblet cells, tissues such as epithelial tissues, organs such as our stomach, all working together to break down the food that we eat into smaller molecules such as nutrients that can be absorbed into the body for energy. Now there are two types of digestion. There's mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion leads to chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion begins in our mouth. We have structures such as the tongue and our tooth which aids this process. We ingest food in the mouth, the tongue passes it to our tooth which breaks it down or cuts it down into smaller pieces to be exposed to chemicals such as enzymes. For example, hmm. So my food is being cut into smaller particles to be exposed to enzymes to break it down. So chemical digestion also begins in the mouth. Now after we ingest the food and it is mechanically broken down into smaller pieces, it is exposed to saliva. Saliva contains salivary amylase, which is an enzyme which initiate the breakdown of carbohydrates. The pH of our oral cavity is more towards the basic side, and this is optimum for the function of the salivary amylase. After the food is chewed, it is then swallowed where it enters the esophagus and forced downward into the stomach via peristalsis. And peristalsis is just the contraction and relaxation of the muscles in our esophagus to force the food into our stomach. The stomach is a muscular and stretchable pouch that functions to churn and mix the food, store the food, as well as expose the food to other enzymes to continue chemical digestion. We call the exocrine system tutorial the stomach's exocrine function is extremely important here. The cardiac, fundic, and pyloric glands of the stomach secretes digestive juices, which contain pepsin, which breaks down proteins, and hydrochloric acid, which makes the environment of the stomach extremely acidic. It also breaks down harmful microorganisms found in the stomach. Because of the acidity of the hydrochloric acid secreted by the stomach, there is also mucus produced which lines the wall of the stomach from the destructive activity of hydrochloric acid. Now the food remains in the stomach for roughly about 4 hours, after which it makes its way to its next digestive destination, which is the small intestine, specifically the duodenum. Small intestine is the real deal of digestion. It's approximately 7 meters long and is curled around in our abdomen. In the duodenum, the pre-digested food is exposed to pancreatic juices secreted by the pancreas. Now these juices contain enzymes such as lipase which breaks down fats, protease which breaks down protein and more amylase which breaks down carbohydrates. Another essential function of the pancreas is to secrete sodium bicarbonate and my chemistry students can recall that sodium bicarbonate is more basic, right? Well, the food coming from the stomach is highly acidic from the HCL added. 
this sodium bicarbonate neutralizes the food to make it more receptive to digestion cool right another essential digestive juice is bile it is made by the liver and stored in the gallbladder it is secreted in the duodenum which breaks down fat into fatty acids second part of the small intestine is the jejunum now the jejunum contains numerous microvilli which are tiny projections brush like projections found in the small intestine which increase the surface area for the absorption of food microvilli also has a small amount of enzymes which conclude the digestion process they also have a network of capillaries with lacteals. Digested nutrients such as amino acid and glucose diffuses across the walls of the capillaries into our bloodstreams while the fatty acid diffuses into the lacteals. The final part of the small intestine is the ileum. Now the ileum also contains numerous microvilli which absorb substances that has not been incorporated in the previous parts. I'm talking about vitamins, minerals, etc. So we can really see that the digestive system and the circulatory system are besties, right? The digestive system be like, hey girl, can you bring this glucose molecule to my friend? She needs it for respiration. And the circulatory system be like, sure girl food that has not been digested as well as incorporated into our bloodstream moves to the next phase of the digestive system the large intestine and the large intestine is the larger tube of the digestive system consisting of the colon the cecum and the rectum the function of the large intestine is to absorb vitamins and water back into our bloodstream it also converts food into feces to be ingested from the body because water is absorbed in the large intestine this solidifies our feces it is sent to the rectum where it is stored until it is ready to be ingested from the body besides the incredible work of the alimentary canal in digestion and absorption of food an accessory organ also plays an important role in digestion, the liver. Now we already highlighted the fact that the liver produces bile which breaks down fat. But it also acts as our biological filter. It detoxifies the blood coming from the small intestine, breaking down chemicals, drugs or anything that is harmful to us. Lastly, let us recap the major points of the digestive system as well as look at some diseases that can stem from the digestive system the major points of the digestive system ingestion is the process by which we take in food remember mechanical and chemical digestion starts in the mouth Peristalsis is the contraction and relaxation of smooth muscle that lines the walls of the digestive organs and that forces food to move forward. Secretion of enzymes, acid and a base liquefies, changes the pH off and chemically breaks down the food. Recall the acid was hydrochloric acid and the base was sodium bicarbonate. Pepsin and protease breaks down proteins into amino acid. Amylase breaks down carbohydrates into glucose. Lipase and bile breaks down fats into fatty acids and glycerol. Absorption allows food molecules to move by diffusion or active transport, in the case of glucose, from the digestive tract to adjacent blood and lymphatic vessels, aka lacteals. Lastly, defecation is the process by which we eliminate undigestive materials through the anus in the form of feces. Some common diseases of the digestive system include Crohn's disease, gastroenteritis, gastroesophageal reflux disease, ulcers, pancreatitis, gallstones, constipation, diarrhea, diverticulitis, and cancers well guys we just slayed another tutorial 
Thanks for joining me. Remember to visit me on Instagram at the Genius JA for your follow-up questions, as well as like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. Bye.